Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to review X2, X-Men Unite. Yeah, it's an awkward title. I think everyone has been confused by it because, you know, they call it X2 for short. But then they have X-Men United. Like, just call it X2 or just X-Men 2 United. But again, that'd probably be confusing. So it's X2, X-Men United. That's what I'll say in the title of my review. X2, X-Men United review. So we're going to call it that. X2, X-Men United. So... When I finished watching this movie, and I will say that I loved it. I thought the movie was awesome. This is my second time watching this movie ever, and it's better than I remember. But as I was watching this movie, I was fighting with myself because I'm like, which one do I like better? Do I like the first one better or do I like the second one better? Because right now, I kind of like the first one better. I don't know. I think I just enjoyed the first one more because I felt like this one went on for a bit longer, and this one, this was longer. I don't know, but personally, this had a lot more, a better story, I will say. I guess because I enjoyed a lot more the first movie, but I will say this one had a better story. This had a better story than the first movie, but I think I enjoyed the first movie better. But, we're, who knows, maybe I'll change my mind at the end of this review. Because probably once I talk about it, I probably will get all of my, like, you know, opinion out there. So, so far for now, I will say the first one's better, but... As we get into this review, I might change my mind. Who knows? But so far, this is still a great X-Men movie. So the film begins with Nightcrawler about to assassinate the president. But it's revealed that Nightcrawler was mind-controlled by Colonel Stryker, William Stryker. So he ordered, well, he mind-controlled Nightcrawler by have some needle thing and put it inside him and control him. Same way how he tr controls Lady Deathstrike. And pretty much he tried to get Nightcrawler to assassinate the president. And Storm and Jean Grey later find him. And he joins the X-Men for this movie. And that's it. And we'll talk about him. Why? Because I, I don't get why he's not in the next film. But whatever. So he's pretty much... He's cool in this film. I like him in this movie. Nightcrawler's awesome. But yeah, it kind of sucks that he didn't appear in the next film. Maybe that's for the better. Maybe he read the script and he was like, oh, fuck that. I'm better off just being in this film. So, eh, who knows. But anyway, besides that. So he... Pretty much got freaked from my control once Jean Grey and Storm found him. Well, not really. It's more when he got shot in the neck by the part where he was mind controlled. That's where he started to lose it. And that's what we started to remember. Like, he was about to assassinate the president. But then once he got shot in the neck with the thing that had him mind controlled, he came to his senses and then just teleported away. And pretty much for the rest of the film, he helped the X-Men and stuff. And the, he's the reason why they managed to get to Colonel Stryker and stuff. Because, you know, he was recently mind-controlled by Colonel Stryker. Let's talk about the main villain, William Stryker. So, pretty much after his plan with Nightcrawler killing the president after mind-controlling him didn't go too well. He then had pretty much kidnapped Charles Xavier in Magneto's cell. Like, he mind-controlled um, Magneto with the same stuff that he used to mind-control Nightcrawler and to tell him where the X-Mansion was and where Charles Xavier is. So, pretty much, Charles Xavier gets kidnapped, and Colonel Stryker kidnaps pretty much half of the students in Xavier's mansion uh, um, later in the film. And pretty much after that, he kidnapped, he has Charles because he wants Charles to annihilate all mutants because Charles Xavier is the most powerful mutant ever because Colonel Stryker's son, Jason, is actually a mutant himself and he re he was an old student at Charles Xavier's school, but Charles failed to like help him with his powers and stuff and Jason blamed his parents for this and the Colonel Stryker's wife killed herself and pretty much he blames Charles Xavier for all this and he kidnapped Charles Xavier. Charles Xavier gave him, like, his own little thing, for, like, Semo, I forgot the name, come on, how did I forget the name, but, you know, the thing where he, like, tries to find someone, he made his own thing for that, and pretty much, Jason, inside a little girl's body or something, for, like, the illusion or stuff, he, he's telling him to, like, kill all the mutants, like, he's all mind-controlled and stuff, and this is all, like, part of William Stryker's plan, pretty much. So after he kidnapped Charles Xavier and Cyclops as well and a few other mutants, well, before the few other mutants thing, he invades, like, you know, the the school and pretty much steal, not steal, Colossus helps escape majority of them and about six of them get kidnapped, mainly little kids that we don't know about. And the ones that really make it out are Wolverine, Pyro, yes, Pyro, Iceman, and Rogue. They mainly are the ones who escape and they later go find where find, well, Gene and Storm by, because they went to Iceman's house, because, you know, they were going someplace where 
some place. I forgot the name of the town they were going to. But he's like, hey, my parents lived there. So they go there. And his little brother calls the cops because the mutants and all. And yeah, that shenanigans happen. And we see Pyro's true powers. And pretty much it's going to show you, like, you know, he's going to be a villain. He's not, like, a fan of what the X-Men do. Like, he wants to, like, you know, kill these guys. He kind of joins Magneto's side later on in the film. So, yeah, he betrays them. But, um, yeah. So, while Tr Colonel Stryker was the main villain, there was also a side villain, Magneto. Magneto came back as the side villain. He escaped, thanks to the help of Mystique. So, for a majority of the film until, like, you know, before Magneto escapes, Mystique's been trying to find her way to, like, in order to break out Magneto. Because the prison cell he's in, there's no match around, meaning he can't escape. Because his name is Magneto, and he controls magnets and stuff. So, like, you know, he can't do that without, you know, if there's no magnets around. So she disguised she she disguised herself as this hot hooker or something. Yeah, hot hooker. 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 Um, so one of these security guards, she like makes out with him, pretty much about to give him a blowjob until he drinks something that knocks him out because she puts something in his drink and pretty much gives him iron in his blood. And once he wakes up and like gives well, goes to Magneto's cell, Magneto notices that there's iron and his blood, and then Magneto, like, takes the blood out, iron blood out, and, like, uses it to escape, and he reunites with Mystique, and they try to help the X-Men stop down to stop Colonel Stryker, but then once they get to the place that Charles is at, it's real that Magneto later betrayed the X-Men, because Colonel Stryker's plan was originally to annihilate all mutants, so he got Mystique to, dis to turn into Colonel Stryker and tell her son Jason that, not her son, his son, Jason, that instead of destroying all mutants, to destroy all humans, because, you know, how humans treated him and other mutants, like, treated them like outcasts. And he says, goodbye, Charles. So he pretty much would leave him there to die. And it's up to the X-Men to, like, save Charles. So I am going a bit things too far with the topic. So let's go back a bit earlier in the film around where Magneto saved the X-Men and they think that he, well, wanted to help them stop Colonel Stryker. So, this is a scene where Logan kissed Jean Grey, and this started the whole Wolverine, Axe, Jean Grey, and Cyclops being the third wheel type thing throughout this trilogy. And pretty much, well, Mystique is watching in the distance, and Nightcrawler uh, talked to her because he's like, so you can mimic the voice, and she, and she does an impression of his voice. And the thing is that, in the comics, Mystique is the mother of Nightcrawler, and they don't acknowledge the fact that that's her son. It's almost like that's that her son, the movie. Like, I didn't even know it was, it was canon. Because when I was first time watching this movie, I'm like telling my mom, Hey mom, what if Nightcrawler is the son of Mystique? Because they're both similar with Blue and stuff. And that was just me having a theory. And then I let her find out, oh, that's canon. Like, I had no idea that was canon. So, and it's never acknowledged in these movies, which is a big shame. Because, like, it'd be very interesting if they did something like that. You know, because... They, this is the same universe that has Wolverine, Sarah Tooth be brothers, but not have Mystique and Nightcrawler be mother and son. So, pretty much later in the film, when Wolverine's in his 10, Jean Grey, Mystique in disguise, tries to make out with him, and then he realized the, the little cut that he gave Mystique in the first movie, and she's like, you know trying to seduce him and stuff, and it's like, ah, man, and I'm just joking, i be like, hey, man, hey, hey, Mystique, I, I, I pay you to stay, <laughs> but Wolverine's like, get out, and stuff like that, so I just wanted to, like, bring that up and stuff, because the whole Logan acts Jean Grey thing, when, like, well, I don't want to get that part out, but we, we want to save that for last. So now we are back to schedule where the film is supposed to be. So after Magneto betrayed the X-Men, Wolverine's, like, on his own for now, and he is fighting... Lady Deathstrike, and she's actually mind controlled the same way how Nightcrawler and Magneto were. So she's pretty much Colonel Stryker's puppet, and pretty much she fights Wolverine, realizes that she's very similar to him, and pretty much she Wolverine takes like this stuff that I guess he used to like you know mind control Lady Deathstrike, and then this like frees her, and then this and then like he injects liquid animantium in her, then it kills her, and then she falls into the little bath thing. I call it that. I'm just going to call it that little, no, tub, the tub that Wolverine was in when he got the animantium. She dies pretty much in there, a similar way when he was first in there to get the animantium bones. 
And the fight scene was really good. It's actually probably my favorite fight scene of the entire movie. I will say that the Sabretooth and Wolverine fight scene was much better because it just felt more iconic when they fall on the Statue of Liberty. Especially that one shot where he's like, Wolverine's like, you know, the whole Statue of Liberty, the pointy part, where it looked like, oh, that cannot be realistic. Like, I love that part. It's just like, ah, I had that iconic scene with them fighting. But this fight is still good, but not as good as the Wolverine versus Sabretooth fight scene. So, besides that, so pretty much after that, um, oh, crap. Sorry, I, I didn't write this part down, but pretty much I forgot to say that before they started fighting, Wolverine was trying to look for his past. Like, that was pretty much what he was trying to do with the first film. Like, once he saved Rogan and stopped Magneto, Charles told him about where to find his past, and he went to the place that Colonel Stryker was at. And when he was there at first, it was all deserted, but then there was a base underground. So then he finds out more about his past, and we get more flashbacks about it. And then later on, we get into a shitty prequel movie that's not canon, thanks to Days of Future Past. Once Storm and Nightcrawler save Charles Xavier and the kids that were kidnapped from Mutant Manor, and pretty much once Jean Grey saved Cyclops and Wolverine killed Lady Deathstrike, they all save Charles and the place is about to flood, and pretty much they all get out there alive, but the Quinjet, I believe they call the Quinjet? No, no, no. No, the Blackbird, the Blackbird. I'm gonna call it the Blackbird. Actually, no, it is called the Quinjet, but I called the Blackbird because, like, it was called in other stories. So we're gonna call it the Blackbird. So pretty much the Blackbird gets, like, you know, it's out of energy or out of batteries, like, it's stuck, like, it can't move. So Jean Grey knows what she has to do, so she sacrifices herself and saves her friends, and pretty much once the Blackbird is able to fly, she then gets flooded by the water that Colonel Stryker has, so her and Colonel Stryker end up getting flooded to death, or pff, flooded to death, but they end up dying there, so Jean Grey sacrifices herself. And the other X-Men are very upset about it because she's gone now. Especially Cyclops. Like, he's very depressed. Like, very depressed. Like, he's, like... Like, in, like in the other in the next film, he, like, grows a beard. He's, like, very depressed. Like, almost, like, almost close to being an alcoholic kind of thing. So, pretty much after that, they go to the president and talk about the whole Mewen thing. is about making a truce or something. And show you that how not all Mewens are like Magneto. And they're actually, like, good people in this world. And... It's a good message. Like, that's probably where I'm like, ooh, this gets it really good. Or, like, that's the part where I'm like, ooh, I don't know which one I like better. So, at the end of the film, we see, we get a quote from Jean Grey, something that Charles had in the beginning of this movie, and I believe the first movie. And then we go to the water, now that's been, you know, Colonel Stryker's place that's now been flooded. And we see the phoenix emerging, going, and swimming, bleh, inside the water, hinting that, you know, Jean Grey will become Dark Phoenix in the next movie, and with Magneto as the main villain again. So, the ending for X-Men 2 was pretty upsetting for me. Like, I'm like, wow, I actually feel sad. Like, I'm like, oh my god, I'm almost about to cry, because, like, you know, it was very emotional, and you feel bad for Cyclops and Wolverine for everyone else, because they lost a friend, and she sacrificed herself, and she's going to become the Dark Phoenix in the next film, and we all know what's going to happen in that movie, and we'll, see, we'll review it tomorrow. So, yeah, that is my review of X-Men 2, X2, X-Men United. We'll just call it X-Men 2. Or just whatever, whatever. We'll just call it whatever. X2, X-Men United. We're just going to call it the, its main title. So, for my conclusion, I'm going to give X-Men 2, X-Men United. <laughs> okay, let me start over. So, I'm going to give X2, X-Men United a 9 out of 10. It's the same rating as the first movie. I will say I like both equally, actually. I will say I like this one much better. I think this had a much better story, and it was more creative, and I probably had a bit more better action. I will say the first movie was more fast-paced, but I do like the character interactions, and I do like the ending of this movie better. Like, you know, it shows you, like, you know, all super movies can't have a happy ending. And I will say that if I was around, if I was alive when this film came out, I'd probably have been like, this is probably the best superhero movie so far ever made. Until Spider-Man 2 happens. So it's like, you know, at the time, this probably was, like, the greatest superhero movie ever made. Then Spider-Man 2 happened, then The Dark Knight happened, and then his other movies, so on. So, yeah. X2, X-Men United is a 9 out of 10. I will, it's, it's equally as great as the first film, if not better. So yeah, 9 out of 10, equally as great as the first film. And I'll see you guys next time where I view the mediocre third film, Last Stand. Oh, yeah.